check. <laughs> the worst thing to do is to laugh at something I do, because it's like a kid, that's encouragement. <laughs> and I'm gonna do it again. Sorry, good morning. Good morning, Macedonia. What a beautiful Sunday, fifth Sunday it is. It's a pleasure to be in the house of the Lord, and it's a pleasure to, amen, to be able to worship with my brothers and sisters in the sanctuary. God bless you to those of you who came out and did not forsake the assembly of yourselves with others, as Hebrews reminds us. Good. God bless you to those of you who are online or who are on your way and are listening in. We praise God for your uh, for your spirit of joining us today as well. Amen. So um, I have a few announcements today. Today is the fifth Sunday, and this is the Sunday we have set aside to collect uh, for our Macedonia Scholarship Fund. So if you have the new giving envelopes, make sure that you check on their scholarship. And we have asked each member to give at least $25 for on every fifth Sunday for our in-house scholarship fund. So we are building our scholarship fund and we have already blessed some out of our scholarship fund. So praise God for us having what we need in-house to bless our kids and to allow them um, resources and ease the burden for them as they go on to college and learn and grow. Amen. Um, Saturday, May 6th, we will have our leadership council meeting. So at 10 o'clock, all leaders and co-leaders are to attend. Remember, we're doing chapter three, sharing the gospel with ease, and our trustees are responsible for that chapter. So we'll see y'all on May 6th at 10 o'clock. Also, we have um, on May 6th is the Teen Summit, the um, Teen Mental Health Stump Summit, Stop the Stigma. It is at Western Michigan University. Macedonia is taking a bus or van, um, and we have about 8 to 12 youth that are going to that. So if you've signed up for that, meet Delbert after church. I have some specific names. Give me a second. So Zamara, Zymira, Zamira Lee, Deja Lee, Xavier Swift and Tyon White. If you are here, we need your shirt size. If you hear this, if you know those folks, we need your shirt size. We also need you to know that the bus is leaving, the transportation is leaving the parking lot at 8 a.m. on Saturday. Um, so if you are here, you know them, have them get a hold of us because we want to make sure that they have the information that they need to go to this summit. They have signed up, but we want to make sure that they know what time to leave. We want to make sure they get the t-shirt. We want to make sure they get the transportation and the information. Also, uh, let's see, Sunday, Mother's Day, we are asking, uh, we're going to do a church hat bow tie Sunday on Mother's Day. So if you want to on Mother's Day, please wear, ladies, wear your church hats and men wear your bow ties and look all good and stuff on Mother's Day Sunday. That's May uh, 14th. And then just not forget for if you are a foster or adoptive uh, parent, if you are a foster parent or adoptive parent um, and you have a kid with hair and you don't know what to do with it, then we have free haircuts and hairdos available um, through Crystal Pollard. You can contact us and we can provide you with that information. We have also set aside this Sunday to recognize um, the fact that cancer of all kinds impacts strongly and greatly impact all our, our community, our black community. And because of that, information is power, resources even more powerful. So we want to make sure that you have what you need in order to, um, to, to know what next steps are. So this information in this folder is for anyone to take. You will find a ton of information in there from coping with cancer, 
for black, indigenous, and color people, or people of color, sorry, people of color, or, um, and from that all the way to being a caregiver to somebody with cancer and how to support them. So make sure you grab these folders, but be, uh, they are available in the vestibule and in the back of the church. And we also have some cancer survivors here that have provided their information that want to be acknowledged. Um, so I'm going to have them stand up. Give me just a second. Sister Shirley Somerville, will you please stand up? Can you come up front too, please? I know, unexpected. You look so pretty. She is wearing her survival slash swat, what do you, sash. Uh, turn, you can turn around. Thank you. She's wearing her survivor sash. Sister Shirley is a breast cancer survivor. She was diagnosed and has been 17 years free of cancer. Um, she, uh, the question was, what would you tell someone faced with a cancer diagnosis? And she says to please get your annual checkups every year. And you will uh, know some of y'all, Uncle Jerry, Jerry Springer, y'all call everybody y'all uncle. Um, he died of pancreatic cancer, but those things are detected because of annual exams. Keep standing there, Sister Shirley. Um, Sister Viola Carr Phillips. Sister Viola Carr Phillips was diagnosed with lung cancer and has been cancer free for seven years. And she would tell someone faced with a cancer diagnosis to talk to someone you can trust besides your doctors and be honest with what you are feeling. We thank God for what he has done in the body of Macedonia, and we thank God for these survivors. And the other one is mine, and I'm a breast cancer survivor for three and a half years. And I would tell someone to stand and lean on your faith, trust in God through the process, and, and make sure you get your wellness exams and do your self-exams. Amen. So then also we will have um, some colon screening kits will be here. Um, if you are 45 and up, you will have the opportunity to get a free colon screening uh, kit. And that, again, is just our Macedonia's efforts, Pastor Troxler's efforts to make sure that your body is well and that you are taking care of your body um, so that you can serve the Lord with all of you. Amen. Good morning. How many glad to be here today? Praise the Lord. We thank God for our pastor and his family. Our scripture is coming from Psalms 100. This is a song of praise. Everybody ready to praise the Lord? All right. He says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. And he didn't say some of us. He said all the land. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sh sheep of his pastor. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him 
and bless his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures to all generations. Father God, we come to you at this hour, Lord. We give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. As we enter into your sanctuary with praise and songs today, Lord, we ask that every voice and every heart will be joyful today, Lord. We praise you and we thank you, Lord, for you is God. We thank you because you are the only God. We thank you because we are your people, oh God. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for what you are in our lives. We thank you because we are the sheep of your pastor. We thank you because you are our shepherd. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for your goodness. So we can rely on you. We can depend on you. Without you, Lord, we can't do nothing. But with you, all things are possible. So we come this morning to lift you up, Lord. To say thank you for being God. And thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your faithfulness. And thank you for loving us and choosing us as your people. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Come on and give God some praise. Hallelujah. We are just going to talk about keeping the faith. I know that you, we've been through some things, and we've gone through some things, and we're feeling some things, but God wants us to keep the faith. Amen. Let, just know that he is going to deliver Amen. no matter what we go through. Hallelujah. Tell me, what do you do when you're standing at a crossroads? When you're standing at a crossroads, what do you do? Where do you turn? When your front is in the road, what do you do? When the world is on your shoulder. When the world is on your shoulder. Tell me, what do you what do? What do you do? When your back is up against the wall. When your back is up against the wall. What do you do? You hold on. What do you do? What do you do? Ah. You got to hold on. And, and keep, keep the faith. Come on, y'all. Keep the faith. Keep the faith. Look at your neighbor and tell them to keep the faith. Keep the faith. Look at your other neighbor and tell them to keep the faith. Keep the faith. Oh, yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Tell me, where do you turn? Where do you turn? When there's nowhere else to turn. When there's nowhere else to turn. Where do you look? When there's nowhere else to look. When there's nowhere else to look. Where do you do? Where do you go? When there's nowhere else to go. Where do you go? When you don't know what to do. When you don't know what to do. What do you do? Master has a plan. And the master has a plan. Hold on. Hold on. And keep the faith. And keep the faith. Do you keep the faith? Can y'all keep the faith? I got to keep the faith. And keep the faith. See, every day ain't beautiful. And every day ain't sunny. I have to keep the faith. Keep the faith. When my back is up against the wall, I got to keep the faith. Keep the faith. See, victory is mine. Vic and the master has a plan. is 
Keep the faith. Amen. Amen. It is now our time to demonstrate our worship through giving. And our giving scripture reads as follows. First Chronicles 29, 11 through 14 and verse 17. Beautifully says. Thine, O Lord is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty for all that is in the heaven and in the earth is thine. Thine is the kingdom, O Lord, and thou art exalted as head above all. Both riches and honor come from thee and thy reign is over all. And in thy hand is power and might. And in thy hand it is to make great and to give strength unto them all, unto all. Now, therefore, our God, we thank you. We thank thee and praise thy glorious name. But who am I and what is my people that we should be able to offer so willingly after this sort? For all things come of thee, and of thy own have we given thee. I know also, my God, that thou triest the heart and hast pleasure in uprightness. As for me, in the uprightness of mine heart, I have willingly offered all these things. And now have I seen with joy thy people, which are present here, to offer willingly unto thee please prepare your offering envelopes if you need those raise your hand and an usher will give them to you at this time the ushers will give you instructions on your giving I have the tithe of Pastor Troxler. I have Jada Troxler's tithe and offering. 
Jada Troxler's tithe and offering, Joshua's tithe and offering, Sister Robin Patterson's tithe and offering, and I also have my own. Don't forget it is Scholarship Sunday, and you have that selection on your envelope to bless those who are needing those scholarship resources through Macedonia. Thank you, Lord, for these gifts that was given. May you take it, multiply it, bless it, that we will continue to do ministry for you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you for being obedient uh, in your giving. And thank you for all of the rich manifold blessings that you continue to allow the Lord to pour out through you here in the vineyard at the Macedonia Missionary Baptist Church. Thank God for each and every one of you. Let me thank uh, Reverend Owens, uh, my daughter, for last week uh, carrying on in such a powerful way. I was, I was actually right around the corner uh, celebrating 24 years with Pastor Wine, and we were sharing with them. But it's good to be able to leave home uh, and know that when you come back home, we'll be there. So thank God for the wonderful uh, service and what you carried on on last week. And actually, once I listened to the, I got a call from my, my sister, a text from Anita, and, and told me the awesome job that Reverend Owens did, and she does that all the time. Uh, but it's good to hear. Uh, but uh, just thank you, uh, Reverend, for carrying on. And she actually, when I listened to the mute, uh, the sermon, she actually uh, made me change my sermon based on what she preached. Um, so I thank God, obviously, for, for her and what she did. And then let me thank minister uh reverend perry for carrying on on wednesday night in such a powerful way last week was a very very busy week and, and it, it, it doesn't it stops today i have to be in ben harbor at four o'clock but i should be back around eight or so and then i don't have to do anything else until tuesday <laughs> I, I hope praise god so let me thank you all again for carrying on in such a good way we will have leadership meeting on this saturday because uh, this will be the first Saturday in May, right? Yeah, tomorrow's May. So we will have the leadership me me meeting this Saturday. Uh, let me thank you all, those that joined us yesterday to help us celebrate the uh, uh, Sister Diane Wilson, the son, Brother Stanley Wilson, uh, Sr., and that family, those were uh, that were there on yesterday. We thank God for you and your support. And I thank God for your prayers. Um, I had to do this. I had to do two funerals I had to do a catechism I had to do a ordination and I, I can't I don't remember nothing else and uh, <laughs> I know I would be going to Ben Harbor uh, today and if I get lost I'll just tell them I know Deacon Henry and somebody can get me to where I need to to go there so continue to to, to lift me up in, in in prayer amen praise God praise God thanks be unto God who gives unto us his inexpressible gift the gift of our Lord and Savior Jesus, who is the Christ, the Son of the living God. To you, my brothers and my sisters, happy birthday, uh, Monica. There was a, I, I was laid up to come, as, we'll, as, as WM would say, but there was so much going on. Uh, and I didn't think there was nobody else in Battle Creek, because if you was with us yesterday, I ain't seen that many black people in a long time. <laughs> I mean, they were coming out of each other. They were just black people coming out of black people. I mean, every time you turn, you couldn't even get out the place. There were so many people. And I think that all them people was connected to the same family. There was a lot of them. I said, I ain't going to never argue with one of them. You had to fight an army. 
praise God. But it was it was it was great, a beautiful day, and uh, so happy birthday, sweetheart. God bless you. Good to see Ed and uh, Bridget, all the way from I believe it's uh, Bloomington, Indiana. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Who's your country? Right? They ain't Hoosiers. Y'all, y'all know what I told them Hoosier came from, right? They don't know who, who's your daddy. That's what that, that's, y'all, y'all laughing. That's why they, they call it Hoosiers. Like, who's your daddy? Oh, okay. Y'all don't. All right. It's going to be a tough one today. It started early. Let me get to the Word of God. Amen. Let's thank God for Aunt Bobby probably sleep. She was uh, inducted into the Hall of Fame, Battle Creek Central, last night. Uh, and then the Williams, I believe it's Jeanette's, Sister Jeanette's niece. She's a judge. I don't have the name, but she was also inducted in there last night as well. So praise God for them and for you all that was able to. It just seemed like last week was the busiest week in the world. So praise God that he got us through that. If you will meet me in 2 Kings chapter 7, verses 1 through 9. And look, Blue had his little concert last night. I looked in on it and he jumping up and down. And, and thank God for him and praise God for them and what they're doing. Thank God for Delbert on this morning. Uh, for instructing us in such an awesome way good to have he and Sheena back here uh, with us I praise God for for both of them be gentle with them if you hug them hug them soft uh, uh, be gentle uh, with them as they continue to come back around and it's just good to be back home with you all uh, my family amen praise God second Kings chapter 7 verses 1 through 9 it reads like this from the King James King James Version then Elisha said, Hear ye the word of the Lord. Thus said the Lord, Tomorrow about this time shall a measure of fine flour be sold for a shekel and two measures of barley for a shekel and in the gate of Samaria. Then the Lord on whose hand the king lead answered the man of God and said, Behold, if the Lord would make wonders in heaven, he poking fun, might not this thing be and he said behold because you said what you said thou shalt see it with thine eyes but thou shalt not eat thereof be careful what you say Dylan Brooks be careful what you say and there were four leprous men at the entering end of the gate and they said one to another why sit we here until we die If we say we will enter into the city, then the famine is in the city, and we shall die there. And if we sit still here, we die also. Now therefore come and let us fall into the host of the Syrians. If they save us alive, we shall live. And if they kill us, we shall but die. And they rose up in the twilight to go into the camp of the Syrians. And when they came into the outermost part of the camp of Syria, there was no man there. And they rose, for the Lord had made the host of the Syrians, watch this, to hear a noise of chariots and a noise of horses, even the noise of a great host. And they said one to another, Lo, the king of Israel hath hired against us the king of the Hittites. And the king of the Egyptians to come upon us. Wherefore they arose and fled in the twilight and left their tents and their horses and their asses, even the camp as it was, and fled for their life. And when these lepers came to the outermost part of the camp, they went in unto one tent and they did eat and drink and carried thence silver and gold and raiment and went and hid it. And came again and entered into another tent and carried thence also and went and hid it. Then said one to another, so wait a minute, hold on, hold, hold, hold. We do not well. This day is a day of good tidings and we hold our peace. If we tarry to the morning light, some mischief will come upon us. Now therefore come that we may go and tell the king's household the word of God. From the reading of that scripture, I want to talk from the thought, from the subject, if you will, based on my daughter changing my message for this week. I want to talk from the thought, Deacon Henry, we've got to tell 
somebody we've got to tell somebody Bridget the older I get the more I enjoy what I call Brother Richards the, the classic Christmas carols my family does not share the same love for the classic Christmas carols because I literally can listen to them year round when it's sunny and when it's fall but they, 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 if they listen to them they may not mind but they gonna wait till like December they said it ain't, it, ain't, it, ain't, it ain't Christmas yet and they playing Christmas music but I've always loved the Christmas music and the, the Christmas carol classics and, and what I enjoyed most about them Murphy is, is as a kid and even now as an adult is that they were simple and they were fun you didn't have to remember a whole lot that's why I like Michael Jackson and Beat It and Billie Jean I don't got to remember a paragraph all I got to remember is Beat It and all I got to remember is yeah just Beat It that's why I like Rick James I didn't know he was singing about we Mary Jane I'm in love with Mary Jane now I know what he was in love with cause you know Rick would get you you know tie you up and burn your feet with cigarettes for a month <laughs> but 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 Reverend they fun and they easy and, and one of my favorites is go tell it on the mountain Christina many of us may not know but but go tell it on the mountain is actually an African-American spiritual song which was likely derived from our oral tradition but although it was derived through our oral tradition it was originally published by John Wesley Work Jr. in 1907 Work is well known for his pioneering studies of African American folk music and for his leadership in the performance of, spiritual, uh, of spirituals he studied at Fisk University in Nashville, Tennessee, and he studied classics at Harvard. From 1898 to 1923, he taught Latin, Greek, and history at Fisk University. And let me just share with you the lyrics of Go Tell It on the Mountain because I'm going to need that for my sermon. You all heard it. You all know it. We heard it coming up. That's one of the songs they gave us when everybody was in, in Sunday school. It said, go tell it on the mountain. And then it said, over the hills and everywhere, go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. While shepherds kept their watching or silent flocks by night, behold, throughout the heavens there shone a holy light. The shepherds feared and trembled when low above the earth rang out the angel chorus that hailed our Savior's birth. Down in a lonely manger, it says the humble Christ was born. And God sent us salvation that blessed Christian mourn. Right? We all know, at least those over 40, 50, we all familiar with go tell it on the mountain. Well, well works work actually inspired James Baldwin to write a book by the same title. Go Tell It on the Mountain, first published in 1953, is Baldwin's first major work, right? Show of hands, how many have at least heard of James Baldwin? Let me show of hands. Okay, well, most of the people over 40, 50, right? In the book, which is, again, Baldwin's first major work, it's a semi-autobiographical novel that establishes itself as an American classic. In the book, Baldwin chronicles a 14-year-old boy's discovery of the terms of his identity as the stepson of the minister of a storefront Pentecostal church in Harlem on one Saturday in March of 1935. Baldwin's rendering of his protagonist's spiritual, sexual, 
and moral struggle of self-invention open new possibilities in the American language and in the way that Americans understand themselves. Baldwin connected the song to the book because of the musical references, it reflects the constant melodies that are sprinkled throughout the novel. The point of the song that sparked the title of the novel by Baldwin was simply this. I have, we have something worth telling, so therefore we've got to tell somebody. And that's what today's sermon is all about. We've got to tell somebody because last week, Reverend Owens told you and told us that we were commanded to witness. Now, when you get a command, that's different than a suggestion. Jesus did not suggest that we do something. He commanded that we do something. Notice it's called the Ten Commandments. It's not called the Ten Suggestions. And because of the one that's given the command, because he's sovereign, you and I, his children, those that have accepted him and received him as Christ over our lives, we don't have the right to tell the one that's sovereign over us what we are and ain't gonna do it's a command that's different than your brother telling you to clean up your room first thing you're gonna say you ain't mama you ain't daddy but when mama and daddy well it used to be now mom and daddy getting punked by these punk kids but used to be when we grew up if mom and daddy said something you did what they told you you didn't ask them why you didn't ask them for how long you did what they told you and they told you until they told you to stop yeah, too many parents now want to have conversations with the kids. I told you to do this, and you talking about you got something else to do. What? I mean, you, 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 you must have mistook me from your history teacher. I'm not asking you. Yeah, and y'all all know the black phrase. I brought you in the world. <laughs> and I'll take you out. So a command, it has weight on it. It has weight on it, and the weight comes from the one who gave the command. So it's different than Kyle, t uh, Kyle somebody just telling you something. You say, well, who told, who commanded us to witness? God. Well, okay, that settles it. So we've been commanded to witness by an authority over us, and we don't have the right to not do it. So then, that's what this sermon is all about. Let me, let me give you some historical setting. In the, in the days of Elisha, King Ben-Hadad of Syria, he decided to besiege Samaria, which at that time was the Israel of Israel, I'm sorry, was the capital of Israel. His strategy was to surround the city Latrice with thousands of his troops, and in doing so, he would cut off the supplies that would normally be brought into the city. And you talking about effective. Ed, this thing was so effective, the strategy was so well, that as he besieged the city month after month, a great famine ensued, and not only a great famine, you would not believe it. But I'm going to show you how bad it was. Look at 2 Kings, and it'll be on the screen, 2 Kings 6, 25. It's going to tell you a little bit of how bad Sister Cannon that, that was. Watch this, watch this, watch this. It bet y'all ain't going to, y'all going to, y'all going to, these ushers get some tissue, because it's going to be, y'all, it's just, it's just, oh man, this, this is bad. This is bad as Milwaukee losing the mouth. It's bad, watch this. And there was a great famine in Samaria. I'm telling you, Reverend, it's going to be bad. I don't even want to read it to you, but it's in the Bible. And behold, they besieged it. Watch this. Until an ass's head was sold for four score pieces of silver. It was so bad that, and I'm going to use this word ass later so y'all don't be talking about Pastor Cussing. It's in the Bible. An ass's head was sold for 80 pieces of silver. And watch this. And the fourth part of a cab of dove's doo-doo was sold for five pieces of silver. I mean, the scripture, look, what y'all think dung is? It's doo-doo. I'm just making it plain, Reverend. As y'all know it, it, come on, some of y'all full of, come on, watch this. And if you think that's bad, now that's bad enough, Andrew. Brother Thompson, that's bad enough, but, but let me show you how it gets worse than that. 
Now let's look at 2 Kings chapter 6, verses 26 through 29. And I'm giving you this because we're going to need it. It's going it's to help. I'm showing you how bad it is. And as the king of Israel was passing by upon the wall, there cried a woman unto him saying, Help, my lord, O king. Watch this. Watch this, Monique. You ain't even going to. I'm glad you had your birthday already because you ain't going to be. Watch this. And he said, If the Lord do not help thee, when shall I help you? Out of the barn floor or out of the wine press? And watch this. And the king said to her, He said, What aileth you? He said, What's your problem? And she answered, Watch this, y'all. Nina, you. What, ooh, watch this. The woman said, Give thy son that we may eat him today, and we'll eat mine soon tomorrow. Yep. Yeah. 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 So why said, So we boiled my son. They had no microwave. Andrew, they boiled him. Look at the scripture, y'all. And then we ate him. And I said to her on the next day, go get your fat boy. So we eat him and she hid him. Wait a minute, y'all ate mine. And you hid your, you better go get a cousin. You better go get, we finna eat something. And we finna eat somebody. Yeah, I'm showing you on the Bible, Joy, it was bad. It was almost bad, the worst in 1929, and Anita can attest to this, and Kim, Daddy told us, you know, 1929, the Great Depression, right? Daddy said, Deacon Dad, and Daddy had a way of saying things. He said, in 1929, times were so bad, rats were standing on the corner crying, eating onions because there wasn't no cheese. That's hard. Let me, let me, okay, y'all don't understand about rats, cheese, onions, 1929. He said, Reverend, times got so hard that they removed all the weed stores. Now y'all, y'all, y'all know. <laughs> all the cash check places where they come to break you. All the casinos, all the liquor places, all the places you love to go, what none. So now y'all know what hard me. Yeah, y'all them rats, I ain't got nothing to do with that. Reverend, it, 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 was, it was bad. And then verse 3, the scene shifts to outside the locked gates of Samaria where four leprous men lived in isolation. Let me show you a little bit something about these lepers. Leviticus 13, 44 through 46. I'm setting this thing up because we got to go tell somebody, but I need to set it up for you. Watch what they, watch how the lepers had it. He is a leprous man. He is unclean. The priest shall pronounce him utterly unclean. His plague, Reverend, is in his head. Watch this, y'all. And the leper in whom the plague is, his clothes shall be rent and his head bare. And watch this. He shall put a covering up on his upper lip and cry, unclean, unclean. Now, just that, can you imagine the psychological effects? I've got the cry unclean when I approach I got to cross the street I can't touch nobody I can't be in I got to shave my head I got my clothes all tore up my armpits falling off my toes are shoeless y'all figure that one out all the days wherein the plague shall be in him he shall be defiled he is unclean watch this he shall dwell alone without the camp his habitation shall be now if you going through something most of the time if somebody with me it's a little less Reverend it's a little less when somebody is there by your side when you're sick even though they can't heal you it helps to look over and see somebody there 
you imagine being sick by yourself y'all know we can't be by ourselves because when the pandemic hit folk done lost their cotton picking minds domestic violence went up and you can't blame that on the pandemic because I was in the same pandemic and I didn't swing at my wife so you being cooped up didn't make you hit your wife take your butt and walk around the block oh you know man all this stress and all this stuff I, well I noticed you didn't hit a man so you were stressed enough to know what you was doing all this pent up stuff well leave well I can't leave cause see I ain't got nowhere to stop but then But I'm saying we all know how, how being isolated feels because of the pandemic. But Andrew, this was, this, this was different than, than they was in a continual pandemic. They, we, at least we didn't have to go outside and claim pandemic. They had to claim unclean, dirty, filthy. They was isolated. Nobody in the text had told the lepers about Elijah's promise of food so they were discussing their precarious situation when they came to a conclusion they said hold on wait a minute hold on this don't make sense they said if we stay at the gate we gonna die of hunger right they said but now if we go to the enemy camp they might receive us and somebody might just show us pity this is what they reckon sister Viola Carr this is what they reckon they said even if the Syrians kill us it's better to die quickly by the sword than rather to sit here and slowly die from hunger so in other words they say if we go in the city we gonna die Murphy, if we sit here, we going to die. And we might as well die on a full stomach. Because we going to die anyway. So we might as well die trying. Rather than to die sitting. So they waited to the twilight. They waited to the street lights came on. Well, they ain't had street lights back then. They waited until it got dark. And then they, they came to the camp. And when they came to the camp, they discovered the man. There wasn't nobody there. They came to the camp and discovered that wasn't nobody there. They're sitting here waiting, saying, well, if we go, they're going to kill us. And what I'm saying is 99% of the things you think going to happen don't ever happen. You are stuck and paralyzed about what's going to happen over here. And what you don't know is that God already went ahead of you and made provision. And we stuck back here trying to figure the situation out. God has already taken care of the problem you thought you was going to have when you got there. The ladies were wondering who gonna move the stone. Those strong men back home crying like, I can't, it ain't politically correct. And when they got there, they found out the stone was moved. And too many of us can't see that God done moved the stone because we so busy looking down like step and fetch it. You need to lift your eyes to the hills from which cometh your help and you will see that that thing that you feared it's gone I'm getting ready to show you how bad God is watch this they got there and said ain't nobody here now earlier in 2nd Kings chapter 3 verses 20 to 23 we're going to read that the Lord defeated the Moabites by sight watch how bad God is watch this 2nd Kings look at the screen watch this 2nd Kings chapter 3 verse 20 to 23 I'm going to show you that, that God has unconventional ways 2nd Kings that's his second that's behind the first one we are already in the 2nd Kings so it's two the Roman numeral depending on how you do it it's 2nd Kings chapter 3 that thing fooling up again David 2nd Kings chapter 3 verse 20 to 23 I just we going we going to just mess up all day today from start to finish <laughs> 
<laughs> Shucks, I, I might do a cartwheel and a flip and say amen and we can leave. Watch this. And it came to pass in the morning. I'm show you how bad God is, Reverend. It, there you go. I need a patent right now. When the meat offering was offered. See, that's, that's why I, I, I tell people, see, I, I'm a meat eater. I got to have meat every meal. And people tell me, I had to bump all that. It's tired, child, bump all that. Listen, the Bible says man shall not live by bread alone. I'm biblical. Yeah, that's what it say. Man shall, right? There was a meat offering. Meat. You know, I'll eat some vegetables, but I like it. Show me, give me some meat. Meat. I need protein. I need meat. I need a chicken, a rib, a pork chop. I need some meat. I need some meat. Look, I need some meat. Yeah, I'll eat some rice, but but the, I'm gonna eat, I wash the the stuff down with the after I eat the meat, I wash it down with vest. But I need some meat for me. It makes my body go. It's like gas in the car. I need some meat. And I ain't Daniel. I ain't going on no Daniel fast. I don't want no vest. I want some meat. They had a meat offering. The meat was so good. Watch this. That behold, there came watch the, there came water by the way of Edom. And the country was filled with water. Watch this. Watch this. I'm sure how bad God is. When all the Moabites heard that the kings were come up to fight against them, they gathered all that they were able to put on armor and upward, and they stood in the border. Watch, watch how bad God is. Watch this. Mosetta. And they rose up early in the morning. Watch what God did. The sun hit the water. It shined upon water. And then the Moabites saw the water on the other side. They saw it as red blood. Watch this. And they said, this is blood. The kings are surely slain and they have smitten one another. Now, therefore, Moab is poor. God, you sight reverend. God almighty Jesus. And then now, here in verse 6, he uses a sound. God Almighty. The Lord defeated the Midianites by sound. And I'm going to show you what he did in Judges chapter 5, 19 and 20, just to show you how bad God is. Judges chapter 5, verse 19 and 20. Watch this. Judges chapter 5, verses 19 and, 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 and 20. Judges. Samson was a judge, Reverend. Watch this. Watch this. Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. The kings came and fought. Watch this. Then fought the kings of Canaan and Tanakh by the waters of Medigo. They took no gain of money. Watch this, verse 20. Watch this. Sisera said, They fought from heaven. What? He said the stars in their course fought against Syria. I serve a God that can whoop you with sight. He can whoop you with a sound and he can whoop you with the stars. That's why God said be still and know that I am God. You don't have to fight. All you need to do is show up for the battle. He said the battle is not yours. The battle is mine because I got unconventional weaponry. See y'all fighting with sticks and stone. Y'all fighting with bullets and knives. He said I can call the stars to cause a ruckus. I can make sight whoop folk I can kill you with a sound thank God that I got a God that can fight for me with sight sound and stars and we run around here putting up our what that gonna do they arthritic if you hit somebody you're gonna break your hand hands as weak as Kawhi and Lee knees listen So, so when they go in, and here I'm almost finished. We'll be done by 11 o'clock. They stumbled upon four things. First of all, they, they ain't nobody here. That tripped him out. And then they, they stumbled upon four things. They, they stumbled upon four things. And them, all them four things, they in verse 8. First thing they stumbled upon was refreshments that's point one if you need one point one they stumbled upon refreshments because the text said when they went in 
they did eat and they did drink now you're saying well so that ain't what, what that got to do with anything now listen remember now these are lepers to get food the lepers had to go to the garbage dump and they had to get their food from the garbage dump they were lepers they couldn't be around anybody so in other words that would be like you and I going to waste management opening the bags and eating what y'all threw away yeah they had to eat what others discarded they had to wipe maggots off I'm trying to help you of what they ate they had to wipe flies off of what they ate they had to wipe mold off of what they ate but the scripture said because they made a decision and they took a risk it says that they did eat and drink now notice now remember this was the king stuff Andrew so there was some fillet meganon on this table Reverend yeah there were no sardines and chitterling no 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 they had prime rib on the remember now they used to eat stuff y'all throw away and, and now they got the Dallas Texas fillet at Texas Roadhouse oh, the, they got a real potato that ain't been mashed by trucks and feet they now got loaded baked potato chives and bacon bits and whatever else they put on top of it they got a side salad Andrew with ranch and French and Italian thousand island million of them they, they got the stuff and dessert rep, they, there's some pecan they got food look what God Alicia said it won't God do it look at Psalm 23 5 watch this this is what God said Psalm 23 5 this is what the Lord said now we know the Lord is my shepherd I sure what I want watch what David said watch how God will do this thing in your life he said watch this now look where the lepers are right 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 lepers Andrew ain't got they can't be in society they can't do this they can't do that they gotta eat the scraps they gotta put stuff on the upper lip they got to the yell unclean they got to cut the braids out the hair and they got the, the, all this stuff but then the Bible said God will prepare a table before you in the presence of your in they sitting out here thinking they're going to die and God preparing it. You sitting there thinking you ain't going to make it and God preparing her. You sitting there thinking you don't know how you're going to do it and God is preparing her. You sitting there wondering where this stuff going to come from. God is. That's why I figured it out. I used to understand. See, when, when black folk, they, they would never say have mercy. All the ones I heard say ham mercy. I figured it out. They was praying for a ham, Andrew, and God blessed them. And let me tell you, God will use the devil to bless you. God will use your enemy, the one that can't stand you, to. He said, He put a table, Reverend, in the presence of the and they can't stop it so they stumbled upon refreshments Sheena. secondly Petri they stumbled upon some riches riches the text said they had silver and gold not cryptocurrency remember. not all that stuff silver and gold listen they couldn't work because they were lepers. They couldn't beg because they couldn't be out in public. They couldn't hold up a sign because a hand wasn't strong enough. You'd be holding up a sign and then your elbow fall off. Now y'all laughing, but their body parts were literally falling off, Reverend. Literally. They couldn't be out. They couldn't go to Walmart and they couldn't stand out on the highway and hold up a sign. They couldn't do it. Because if they held up a sign, they couldn't write, I ain't trying to be funny, they couldn't write, Reverend, because they'd be in the middle of writing and the hand fall off. Click. <laughs> and then what you going to do? They can't put it in their mouth because they already got something on their upper lip. I'm already ready to y'all here. 
Andrew, they couldn't do like we do. They couldn't do a GoFundMe page. Reverend, they didn't have direct deposit because they ain't had nothing to be deposited. They couldn't work because they couldn't be in public. And they went in there. Pockets empty. All of a sudden, pockets started jingling. And I imagine some of them squoze that silver so much if they opened their hand, it fell apart. But watch what God says in Job 27, 16 and 17. Watch what God said. He said, talking about the wicked, though he heap up silver as the dust. Watch this. And prepare raiment as the clay. Watch verse 17. The wicked may prepare it, but the just shall put it on. See, when you see them people out there selling, slang, and doing all this stuff, and you wonder why they're getting over, God said, I'm just giving more for you. It said, he may prepare it, but the just shall put it on, and the innocent shall divide the seal. I ain't even working for it, and they dividing it. God Almighty Jesus. They stumbled upon refreshments. And thank God none of us have ever been to the dog heap, garbage heap. But you do know in the United States, and that was Reverend, that was not just an episode on good times. You would be amazed how many human beings are eating dog food and cat food. Now you blessed not to do it. But but truth be told, a lot of us sitting in here driving pretty, looking pretty, got on nice toilet water, you're smelling good, and some of us is one paycheck from Alpo and Kitty Meow. Then we ain't going to tell nobody, Reverend. They stumbled upon refreshments. They stumbled upon riches. And they stumbled upon raiment. Raiment is clothing. Look at Isaiah 61.10. Watch what this says. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God. For he has clothed me with the garment of salvation. I don't need to go no further. And he covered me with the, God will give you clothes. He will cover you up. These folk had stuff falling off. They couldn't come to the clothing house because they wasn't supposed to be in public. The stuff they had was ragged, torn, shredded all the pieces. And now they're going there and they got suits like Charles Thompson. And Cal Thompson, they got Stacey Adams shoes. They got knuckleberries and socks, thick and thins. And now they got everything. A little bit of uh, uh, accessories. Got a little tie and a little cliff. They got clothes now. Yeah. Reverend, they got refreshments. They got riches and they got raiments. 30 minutes ago, they were contemplating dying. Don't give up. God got some refreshments waiting for you. God got some riches waiting for you. God got some raiment waiting for you. Don't throw in the towel. We are literally talking rags to riches. Now these three things led them to another hour. It led them to a realization in verse 9. Verse 9 is a, wait a minute. He said, hold on. Wait a minute. Let us put some mercy in it. Hold on. Wait. Wait. Y'all thought I was going Cat Williams, didn't you? Just said, wait a minute. But this ain't, this is Ken, this, this is Marlene, this I, I Nash, we, I, this ain't, Nicole, this, we, wait a minute, hold on. We don't do well. This ain't right. They said, we got all this food. We got all this money. We got all these clothes. And people are eating donkey ass soup. I, I told you I asked, it was in there earlier. People eating donkey ass cheese, oh, donkey head cheese. People making literally doo doo sandwiches. I read it, it's in the text, I'm not making it up. They said women are literally eating their children. And we sitting in here with all this goodness. A ain't going Now, if anybody 
should have kept this to themselves, it was these four people. You ostracized from society, can't vote, can't go to nothing, can't do nothing. You just got, only thing you can say is unclean, unclean. You got to announce your uncleanness and don't say nothing else. You got to walk on the other side of the. They have been physically tormented. They have been emotionally tormented. They had been socially tormented. They could have made up everything in their mind why we don't need to tell nobody. We keep it all. Let's go. Because I know if y'all sitting in here, if y'all find some gold, you ain't even telling your wife. I know I'm Reverend. I ain't finna split this. Tell her she gonna want some. Wives, you ain't gonna tell your husband. You gonna say, I found it. In fact, he owed me silver and gold. So why would I give it to you for you to turn around and give it back to me? They start playing psychological games with us. <laughs> yeah. How you gonna keep all that gold to yourself? When the last time you cooked? Okay, sweetie. <laughs> when the last time you cleaned up? You won't even flush the toilet. Nasty. This silver and gold is mine. And every man in here know the answer from all of us. You right, baby. Now, we ain't leave the house and cuss you out. But we ain't going to do it in front of you. <laughs> ain't none of us that crazy. If me and me in church wearing sunglasses, and you ain't wearing, wearing sunglasses, I don't wonder. I know what happened. He said something he wasn't supposed to. <laughs> Who you going to tell? Ain't no man going to say, yeah, my wife whipped me. Yeah, we fell down the steps. Now I don't Bridget help me. How the, now the step? How you just how the steps? Right? Did did you did you did you fall like? I mean, we know you're getting clumped. I mean, it ain't good, but you don't fall down the, and hit one eye. Nobody believe that. Oh yeah. I was over your house and you ain't even got no steps. So I know you ain't fall down no steps, Reverend. Because you won't have none. <laughs> yeah, you ran, you ran into a door and a fist. Reverend, these people said, uh uh, wait a minute, hold on. We have to tell somebody about all this goodness. And Reverend, this brought me to your message, and this is the crux of the message. We sitting up in the church house. Dress right, riding right, eating right, got a health plan, got a dental plan, got food in your refrigerator. And some of you are so blessed, you got a side one over here that you can put other stuff in. And yet you still go to, out to eat afterward. But that's a whole other subject. That's, that's your money. You do what you want with it. And, and, and Reverend, I'm transitioning now. Because we got all of this love and won't tell nobody. Won't show it to nobody. Won't share it to nobody. We got all of this joy and we won't say nothing. We keep it to ourselves. We got all of this peace. Folk out there blowing their heads off, doing this, doing that, trying to pull their toes off and their ankle and the heel. We got all of this peace. I won't say nothing to you about what we got all of this long suffering we won't tell nobody we got all of this gentleness bogged up inside of us and won't tell nobody we got all of this goodness and won't tell nobody we got all of this faith and won't tell nobody we got all of this meekness and won't tell nobody we got all of this temperance and we won't tell nobody we got all of this purpose and we won't tell nobody all of these principles and won't tell nobody all of this power and can't heal or tell or help nobody all of this abundance give me something Deborah Sheena just throw Mickey Mouse on give me something 
All of this abundance and won't help nobody. All of this authority and won't cast nothing out of nobody. Got all of this anointing and won't help nobody. All of this safety won't tell nobody. All of this spirit won't tell nobody. Got all this salvation and won't tell somebody. You need to tell somebody that there's some food over here and his name is Jesus. He's the bread of life. If you're hungry, he'll feed you. If you're thirsty, he's water. I got to tell you about a man named Jesus. He went to a hill called Calvary a place they call the skull they put nails in his hand they put nails in his feet they speared him in the side they crowned him with thorns they put him in the ground three days later that same Jesus my rock and my redeemer he rose from the dead stood on resurrected ground and declared all power I got to tell you that there's hope for you I got to tell you there's help for you I got to tell you there's peace for you it's found in my Savior his name is Jesus won't you try Jesus you need to tell somebody about all this goodness instead of sitting up in here all this Jesus and we get in our cars and ride right by people that are starving drive right by the homeless and we got bread from heaven that can feed you till you won't no more and we keep our mouths shut These lepers said, we can't do this. Y'all, people, people were eating their children. Eating their reverend. No, never mind. Because, never mind. People were boiling a donkey's head. And Reverend, it did not only say that they were eating doves, Dookie. It said they got a fourth carb of it. So they didn't even get the whole splatter. They just got a sliver. That's how bad it was. But now think about that. We're talking about here a physical famine. Let's move that to now. Folk, you and I know that's in a spiritual famine. And the book of Amos tells us, if you think this was bad, he said, there's going to come something worse than this. He said, Reverend Orange, there's going to come a time when you feasting for the word of God and it ain't going to be there. See, that's where all of our help is. See, I'd rather have the word of God than a steak because I can eat the steak and digest it and it's gone in about a day or two. Reverend, I can eat this and it stays in and keeps building and keep building. Now I got more hope. Now I got more joy. Now I got more peace. So as bad as the physical famine is, it's worse to be in the spiritual famine. And here's the thing. We know where there's help. We know where you can eat and eat and eat. We know of somebody that will clothe you. We know of somebody that said the silver and gold belongs to me. It's Jesus. And we can offer them Jesus. Stand if you can. So what I want to do right now, those of you in the sanctuary, I want to offer you Jesus. Because he's been too good to me to not tell you where to find some raiment, where to find some riches, and where to find some refreshments if you're in this sanctuary and you've never made a public declaration that Jesus is the Christ the son of the living God you never confessed him with your mouth that Jesus is Lord you've never believed in your heart that God raised him from the dead but you say I, I, I want to be saved I want to I want to receive this goodness. Well, according to the scripture, that's all you've got to do. Confess with your mouth. Believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead. Will there be one in the sanctuary that wants to invite Jesus right now into your heart? You don't even have to walk. All I need you to do is raise your hand. Just put it up high. All I need you to do is raise your hand. You don't have to walk. We'll walk to you. Because he's too good. 
for us to not tell somebody about the goodness because the stuff you thought was going to happen he didn't already took care of that I just showed you a God who can fight your battle with sight Reverend he can make the sun hit the water and you think it's blood and run away you don't even have to fight that's why I said stand still Israel and see the salvation of the Lord he told Peter Peter if I needed help in a fight I wouldn't call you put that switchblade up he said I can call 12 legions of angels and they'll be right here doing my bidding I serve a God that can whoop you with a sound and see that's what happens when we praise God when you're going through the devil don't understand he said wait a minute now nah, wait a minute they bills they can't pay their bills but they still praise it I don't understand what's going on they're going through a divorce but they still praise it I, I don't get it they lost their job but they're still shouting that sound confuses the devil because he used to complaining and moaning and groaning and here you are praising God and he said I don't know what to do with this one God said don't worry I can make the stars fight Pharaoh's his magician said wait a minute now God fighting against us because the children of Israel didn't have anything and all them chariots start coming and Andrew all God did was made it rain and then the chariots got stuck in the mud and couldn't move God said you don't have to fight put your hands down he said let me do this thing he said I just need you to show up and grab the trophy for me he said the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the earth looking for someone who heart is perfect toward God he said I want to do something big in your life I'm gonna take somebody that they call a nobody and do something with him these lepers show us you can't be selfish with all this goodness they said we got to tell somebody yes I would like to have all this gold to myself but I can't rejoice knowing my brother over there starving when I got all this gold and getting him some ain't gonna take away from me we got all this goodness wrapped up in Jesus wrapped up in salvation we got to tell somebody those of you online Facebook YouTube campus if you made that decision for Christ please ma'am please sir let us know contact us and within 24 hours I'll guarantee we'll contact you yo we got to tell somebody when you leave church today and somebody said what happens to Jesus he's good well what did the preacher preach about Jesus who was there Jesus what did the choir sing Jesus yeah this refreshments their riches their raiment folk need these things and we got it in abundance and we keep our mouths shut until you get on Facebook and that's when you start running your mouth so when God wants us to close it, we open it. And then when he wants us to open it, we close it. We got to tell somebody. You ain't got to save them. All you need to do is tell somebody. Man, I know a doctor that's taking new patients. And the premium had already been paid. They ever told you that. He paid it 2,000 years ago. All you got to do is come. And you don't, need to, you don't need a foot doctor, head doctor, elbow doctor, stomach doctor. He got everything in one package in fact he got more power in the hem of his garment than we do in all the resources and medications we in the hem of his garment I want him you can have him his name is Jesus praise God hallelujah while you're standing thank you God for another expression of your goodness allowing us to encounter you and your spirit in the sanctuary amongst the brothers and sisters in Christ whereby we encourage strengthen one another Bless us, be with us as we leave this place. Open our mouth. Let us be mindful of all this goodness and tell somebody, God been good in the blessed name of Jesus. Open our lips as we share and show forth the praises and the goodness of our God. We thank you, Jesus, for dying on Calvary, being buried, rising from the dead, and most importantly, rising in our hearts. Let us tell somebody. We got to tell somebody. We've been commanded to tell somebody about the goodness of God. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you. Praise God for you. Tell somebody.